So here is the imagery I showed uh, last video on the uh, B flat major chord progression. And it's not a well used key, but it does do all the things I need it to do, demonstrating both the math and the music. Here is the written music for that progression again. And uh, next we'll take a quick look at the math. The idea I have for this is that the numbers and math describe the logical relations between the frequency combinations. That's the what. And the music theory terminology describes how we use those relations and how we describe that to each other when we make music. Here are the frequencies on the chord diagrams. And on the staff. Enlarged so you can read them. Then the Roman numerals showing the scale degree and a chord type. That's 1, 4, 5, minor, 6th. And next to put in the letter names. And now there's no room to keep these letter names in the next step. So if you uh, want to check them out, do so now. Stop, pause the video and uh, check out the letter names. So here's what the math looks like. Uh, most guitarists don't want to know anything about this stuff. But... AI will probably be figuring this all out for us uh, pretty soon, probably making all our music for us. So for the moment, I'll give you a verbal explanation. The horizontal or melodic lines are matched with vertical or harmonic structures. Those are the chords. Everything is related by the 12th root of 2, and that's the semitone. It's the mathematical unit that subdivides the octave and all the other intervals. So now you're adding apples to apples and not oranges to tuna fish. The guitar and the piano use the 12 through the 2, the idea of the 12 through the 2, uh, to sound as closely as possible to the harmonic series or the natural vibrations of objects. And the voice and other instruments actually use different size intervals that, uh, that are more natural and because the voice is pretty natural, and that uh, generally approach the equal division idea here, or the mathematical logical idea here. Now, when the artist can convince the audience that, one, everything sounds good, and two, it makes intuitive sense, then they might uh, have the audience put some money into the hat, and then you can buy uh, strings or maybe eat or something like that. That's the art part of the thing. And the audience always changes. Some like fish more than fruit. And some get tired of fish quicker than others. So I think you can make music with uh, any instrument uh, when you stay in tune with yourself first and then with your audience. And maybe uh, you can make a little bit more money if you put your audience first. Uh, but maybe you'll make less music. I don't know. It depends. Uh, you got to make that decision for yourself. And uh, mostly what I want to hear is I want to hear people who have made that kind of decision and they're doing what they want to do. Gives me some incentive to do what I want to do. Yeah, here's another image. And this is the math for a G major bar chord on the third fret. The squiggly equal, equal signs means approximately equal. And it's what I mostly use here. Basically, it all means that the equal tempered frequencies approximate the uh, frequencies of the uh, natural harmonic series. It's all based on the idea that the higher frequency divided by the lower frequency is the interval ratio. The higher frequency divided by that ratio equals the lower. The lower frequency multiplied by the ratio equals the higher ratio. The octave ratio of 2 to 1 is subdivided into smaller ratios based on the 12th root of 2 for the guitar and piano in equal temperament. So as far as I can see, the uh, relationships are all mathematical. Uh, the music theory terminology helps us to use that. One thing about these numbers is uh, they don't care what you call them. They're going to have the same relationships no matter what name you put in front of them. Uh, I can sometimes use the numerators in these ratios to tell me how many frets to move along a, a single string. Other than that, it's all up to AI to figure this out. There are some ideas from the science world that uh, 
I find kind of interesting related to music. Uh, you may or may not, but I'll put links down below. Seems to me we're getting awfully close to this AI, good or bad. And I'll finish off with a bunch of ideas I've had, and I just want to clear the table, so to speak, put out everything I've got, and uh, and just sit, or sit around and practice like I'm about to tell you how I'm going to do it. And basically, you lock yourself in a room and you uh, practice moderately quietly. The less people you annoy, the less interruptions you get and the more practice you get. Now, you're not trying, but you end up making every mistake it is possible for you to make. And you're the only one that knows how to make them mistakes. You learn from those mistakes. You start correcting them. And in the meantime, you are practicing uh, exercising that bar chord. You're doing two seconds on, five seconds off. Do it no more than about a minute, two minutes at a time. As many times a day as you can do that, but take a big long break in between. You don't want to injure the hand. That's what I did. You don't want it. Again, very common and very limiting. So uh, take a break. In about a month or two, you'll uh, have both the bar chord and the rhythm down, and then you can start learning music. Uh, listen to yourself. Watch videos of yourself. Uh, use a uh, metronome, uh, don't use a metronome, use a uh, tap of your foot, don't tap your foot. Try everything you can to get that rhythm down. And then uh, you'll be practicing correctly, you'll be listening, and that's the most important thing. And then if you practice correctly, you'll be able to play correctly. As light a pressure as you can get away with for that particular piece of music. It takes work and time, and uh, sometimes it's like... Uh, being in a meditation in motion. As close to the fret as you can get without muffling it, and the lighter you're holding it, the quicker you can make a shift to a next uh, note. As soon as you find out where all the possibilities are, the music will actually start happening on its, on its own. You will want a good teacher somewhere in the process, and I can't tell you when that might be, uh, and I can't tell you who it might be. Everything is uh, individual. But the best teachers I ever had always gave me enough work to do for a month and told me to come back next week. And then uh, they usually asked me, did I want more? Now, another method I have heard of, I didn't actually go through this method. Uh, one person would give one thing at a time to the student and say, come back when you think you have learned it. And then when the student would come back and could do that particular uh, technique, uh, he would give another... Uh, lesson to do. Now, some people do without a teacher and learn everything on their own, and uh, I can't criticize that. A good teacher will tell you when, you, when you've reached that point, when he, when he or she thinks you've reached that point, say, get lost, you know, go, to, go on your own. So it's up to uh, you to find your own teacher, whether that's uh, someone else or yourself. And while I'm rambling on about these things, one of the best things to do is do things really, really really slow and strike the note holding down one finger and then wait until the note dies away before you do the next note wait till that note dies away it takes forever you gotta patience with this one but it builds strength it's more like isometric exercises than uh, lifting heavy weights and uh, build strength and control much more important than speed. I had gotten that idea from Claudia. She is now uh, Selena Romero's wife, and uh, she had been studying with them for some time. Had I uh, learned that at the beginning, this was already after I had injured the hand. Had I learned it first, I might, uh, might not have injured the hand, at least not in that particular way. Nowadays, you can see the uh, general idea on many, uh, especially on the classical guitar uh, instruction videos, but really anywhere in the, in the guitar world. Practice slow for strength and control, and later on, you speed up as fast as you want to make whatever kind of music you want to make. Now, over the last eight or nine months, I wrote about 100, 150 uh, short poems, uh, allegedly songs. Turns out that I really need the rhythm. I need to understand the chord progressions a little bit better to uh, make them into worthwhile songs. And then I got to see what to do about copyright and how you, you should uh, release songs these days. 
And out of that 150 songs or whatever, maybe half a dozen or seem to be worth uh, a little bit more time. Now, here are some uh, ideas I had placed down. I had actually written a song here, and I've just taken the song out uh, because I've given enough away so far. And I've written out a few ideas about how I want to write the song because I want to write a bunch of songs. I figure I wrote 150 and maybe half a dozen were any good uh, or worth any more time. So I want some sort of mechanism, some sort of a procedure whereby I can write a lot of songs. And here's one. Uh, do you want to be just who you are or would you rather be a rock star? So here's about how I do it. Uh, do you want to be just who you are or would you rather be a rock star? Maybe a little change here. When fame's the game, you sell that privacy. If a star you are for you, it's paparazzi. So I haven't seen this in about four months, maybe more, and it addressed some things that I was going through. In other words, what am I doing with this songwriting? And obviously I ain't going to strut my stuff on stage because what the stuff I got doesn't strut very well no more. So uh, what do I want to get out of this and what uh, what might happen? So it's, it's a good theme for a song for me. And one thing I noticed just now is that if in order to make this anywhere convincing, I really got to sing it. I got to put some emphasis into it, which uh, brings in uh, harmony and uh, chord progression and key and all of that. So we'll see how this goes. Maybe a good one to uh, practice up with here. And now my accompaniment is going to be a bit uh, limited by my uh, thumb to chords I can uh, actually uh, use. And uh, here's my first ideas on them. And I've already changed a couple of them. Probably change a few more. See which ones I can really use. And this is from my other channel, uh, Syncopated Rhythm. Uh, I think it's really important. I don't think I want to do it before I get that 4-4 four, four rhythm down from the uh, chord progression I've shown here. It's a little bit of syncopation I was doing about a year ago. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Well, maybe I will start practicing that a little bit more. And I have not spent too much time on either the uh, caged system or the three notes per string system. Um, we'll wait on that too. I think probably need a little bit of each. And so far, all I have done about copyright protection is to look up these names and uh, get some idea what, what's involved. And I'll have to do a little bit more research on that as well. Any songs I actually get uh, published or actually publish and put up on the web, probably put up on the uh, the other Bob O'Rourke channel. And uh, this one here is a CCBY, and I want to keep it that way. So uh, we'll separate the things a little bit from this point on.